Supreme Ruler Cold War is a geopolitical strategy game where players can take control of, in a campaign, either the United States or the USSR and lead their nation through the historical era of the Cold War, facing things like the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the space race, and try to navigate the era as it went or make changes as they feel. Or you can play it in a sandbox mode where you can pick any nation that existed in 1949 and try to lead them through the events of the Cold War and put your own spin on things. Uh, of course, we also have a multiplayer element, so you'll be able to play over a network or the internet. So a big factor during that era was not actually going to war with another country, but trying to get them in your camp. I mean, the Soviets did it through intimidation, but in a lot of cases, economic and military aid. And now, sometimes the military aid's not funneled to the people in power, it's funneled to Castro and get him into power. So, and you have that kind of escalation. What's Russia doing? What's the US gonna do to counter? And, you know, things like that have a tendency to escalate and it's a matter of controlling the escalation so it doesn't lead to nuclear war, but then again, it could lead to nuclear war. <laughs> well, the scope of our game is very unique. Um, we have incredible detail in the game, and it's been the biggest challenge of development is making that detail accessible to the players, but not overwhelming the players. Uh, military is real-time tactical, so you control every battalion in your, in your government's military. So if you're playing as Russia or the U.S., you could have two to three thousand units easily that you're controlling and having to move around the map. And so that element of detail and research really needs a good GUI, user interface. And uh, that's always been our biggest challenge, is making sure that the, the player can access everything without overwhelming them. The details of where materials are in the real world, the economies of the real world, the personalities of the countries involved, uh, colonies. You know, we have uh, African nations trying to gain independence during the Cold War. You have the Caribbean nations becoming independent. Um, you have so many things happening all over the world. And beyond that, we have a very heavily researched um, background. The products like coal reserves, uranium supplies, petroleum uh, wells are all where they're located in the real world. The military units are based on actual uh, orders of battle, or ORBAT. So these are the inventories that the U.S. and the USSR had in 1949 to start the game. Well, the goal of the game as in the campaign mode, as either the U.S. or as the USSR, you try to bring other nations into your sphere of influence. That's the primary design goal. Also in the campaign, we do allow you just to set smaller goals if you want. So they can pick, take over the whole world or just a small portion of it. Or they could pick something different like winning the space race, be the first one to land a man on the moon and that wins the game. Controlling that scope of play in the victory condition so lets players choose how long they want the game to run and how much of the world they want to take over. <laughs> Cold War, as I said, is, is tense. I mean, there's that element, it's a unique element in games that tension is almost as good as anything else that happens. It's the expectation of what could happen and how to avoid what you don't want. And for the first time in human history, there's the possibility of total annihilation. With, and really, there's nothing colder than a nuclear winter. 